Hi, in this video, we are going to be learning about working with date and time in Microsoft Excel. In this chapter, we would be learning about the fundamentals of date and time, what they are and how they work in Microsoft Excel. We would learn about certain best practice in keying in dates in Microsoft Excel. We'll also learn about some simple date functions and then we will learn about certain complex date operations such as adding months and years to a date or finding the number of working days or calculating the number of days based on certain other conventions. So let's start. In Microsoft Excel, a day is simply nothing but a number. They just appear in a different format. One day has a value of one. So that means if you want to do any date operations such as adding or subtracting, it's very easy. If you want to add 10 days to 1st January 2021 or if you want to subtract 10 days from 1st January 2021, you could just do it mathematically. So here if I want to find out what is 10 days before 1st January 2021, I can just put 1st January 2021 minus 10. If I wanted to add it, I could just put plus 10. It's also very easy to find the difference between two dates. If you want to find the difference between two dates, all you have to do is I have the end date here 21st April and I have the start date as 18th March. So I can simply put it as 21st April minus 18th March. Sometimes when you're working with dates, you may see your dates appearing as a number. As we mentioned earlier, every date is just a number. It is merely a matter of formatting. So if you want to change the date from a number format to a date format, you could do it using a simple shortcut key, which is Control Shift 3. And at times, if your number appears as a date, you can change it back. So in this case, the 34 that we got here appears as a date here. And all I have to do is put Control Shift 1 to change it back to number. What is this 44, 196 or 34 here? MS Excel date starts from 1st January 1900. And that has a value of 1. 2nd January 1900 is 2, 3rd January 1900 is 3 and so on. So 366 equals 31st December 1900 and 367 would be the next day which is 1st January 1901. And if you look at it that way, 31st December 2020 would be 44196 and that's because it is 44196 days since 1st January 1900. Okay, we learned about date. A date is a number and you can easily add a date or find the difference between dates. What about time? So one date equals one we said and one hour is simply equal to one by 24. And that's because one day has 24 hours. The same way, one minute is going to be one by 24 times 60. And that's because an hour has 60 minutes. So a day is one. And you divide it by number of hours in a day multiplied by the number of minutes per hour and that will give us the value of a minute. So now you can even guess what one second would be equal to, isn't it? And what would that be? That would be 1 upon 24 times 60 times 60. So now let's get on to this problem and why don't you try this? We have to start at 11 a.m. and we have to work for 3 hours. So at what time would we end? You can pause the video here and try and see what formula to apply and then you can continue. Now the formula we're going to apply is going to maybe slightly tricky. It isn't actually. So when I start from 11 a.m. and add 3 to it, I still get same 11 a.m. Why is it? Because I'm getting the time 11 a.m. That's 3 days from the start date. Because 3 is 3 full days. If we are talking about 3 hours, what are we supposed to do? It's going to be 11 a.m. plus 3 upon 24. Now, can you also think about how do we find the difference between two times in terms of number of hours? So we are starting the work at 11 a.m. We are ending at 2 p.m. Again, you could pause, think and then continue. So the formula here is simply going to be ending time minus the starting time multiplied by 24. Now, at times, time may appear as a number or a number may appear as a time. If your time is appearing as a number, as in this case, and you want it back as a time, what you can do is change the format and the shortcut key is Control Shift 2. 
Similarly, in this case, I want 3 as a number, as an integer. But if that appears as a time, then what we can do is, again, change the format to number. And the shortcut key is Control Shift 1. Now that we've understood about the fundamentals of date and time, let's go and talk about certain best practice in keying in dates. As far as dates are concerned, Microsoft Excel recognizes the date even when you type in short codes such as DDMMYY. But when you type short codes, the date that Excel recognizes depend upon your system settings. My system is set to accept input in the form of DDMMYY. So here if I type a date such as 15th December 2020 as 15-12-20, it accepts the date correctly. But if I try to input the date in the month date year format 12-15-2020, it does not accept the date as a date. Now you might be wondering as to how would I find out whether Excel recognizes the date as a date or as a text. You can do either of the three tests to quickly find out whether it's recognized as a date or a text. Firstly, date is a number and therefore it's by default right aligned. In this case, the 15th December 20 is right aligned by default. We have not set the alignment, but it's right aligned. Whereas the second one is left aligned. That means I know the second one is recognized as a text, not as a date. Another thing you can do is you can also try and see whether the control shift three shortcut key, which we just learned, if that works. Because if it's recognized as a date, the control shift three shortcut key would work. If it doesn't work, then we know it's not recognized as a date. Third thing you can do is try doing some numerical operations. Date being a number, you should be able to add dates. But if it's recognized as a text, then when you try to add the date, you will see a value error. You can try any of the three tests. All of them are going to give you the same results. Now, before we move on, let's also understand about using the short code of YY for a year. So let us say I'm typing the year as 15th December or 15-12-20. Now, if you look at the date, Excel recognizes the date as 15 December 2020. But if I type the same as 15-12, let's say 31, you notice that it takes a date in 1931. Now this setting is also driven by your control panel settings. By default in most systems, when dates are entered in two digits, it's recognized as an year between 1931 and 2030. You can change that in your date settings in your control panel. But at Profectus, we recommend certain best practice while typing in dates. And that is, we recommend that you type the date as first DD, which is two digits of the date, followed by three digits of the month or three letters of the month. So if it's going to be December, type it as DEC hyphen, follow it with four letters of the year. So let us say if I'm talking about 2055, I'm going to type it as 2055. Now, in these days when we are working through virtual PCs and remote PCs, the date settings in different computer could be different. And that is where following a standard keying in best practice would ensure that we don't make a mistake. Now, let's also understand whether it is possible to key in a date directly inside a formula. So, for example, I want to find the difference between 18 January 2024 and 15 December 2021. Is it possible to directly key in? The answer is no. So if I type typing 18th Jan 2024 minus 15 December 2021, it is not going to work. The alternative here, if you ever have to do it, is to use the date function. So in a date function, we are going to start with the date function. So date, you have to specify the year, which is 2024 in this case. Then the month, which is 1, and then the day, which is 18. So that's 18 January 2024 minus, to specify 15 February 2021, I'm going to again give, use the date function and give the year as 2021. The month is 2 and the day is 15. I will touch upon the date function. I'll touch upon the date function very soon, once again in the next sheet. 
So now in this sheet, we're going to be learning about certain basic date functions. These functions are mostly used to identify attributes of a date, such as the year, day or a month. So firstly, let's learn certain simple functions. If you want to get today's date, what you can do is simply use a formula of today with an empty parenthesis. That gives you the latest date today. And if you want to get current time, what you can do is use a function now. Both these functions are always updated. They keep updating themselves and you will always get the latest value. Now let's talk about some of the other functions. Let's say I have dates and I want to find out which year does the date fall in. What you can do is simply give a year function here and select the date. You will get the year extracted out of the date. What if you want to extract the month? You can extract it using the month function. The month function will extract the date to you in number format. So that means July is what I'm extracting and July is month number seven. And that's what we get here. What if you just want to extract the day out of it? You might have already guessed it. The function is a day function. Day and selected, you will get the difference. At times you may want to find out which day of the week it is. So if I have a date like 18 November 1997 and you want to find out which day of the week is that 18 November 1997, there is also a function for that which is weekday. And you can select that particular week. We also have functions like week numbers, and other functions which can find out which week of the year it is. Now, if you wanted to get the month in text or you wanted to get the day of the week in text, that can be done using text function, which we learn in a separate chapter on text function. Now, let me come back to the date function that we talked about earlier. When would we use a date function? We would use it if you want to coin a date based on the inputs for the year, month and day. So in this case, let's say I've been given that the day is 11, month is three and the year is 2024. And with these data, I want to coin a year or coin a date. I can use the date function here. I'm going to put equals date, specify the year, followed by the month and followed by the day. All these values can also be typed in a different cell and we can link it to those cells as well. Now let's move on and talk about certain complex numerical operation. We already learned when we learned about date fundamentals, we learned that adding dates is as simple as doing a numerical operation and same as finding difference between the dates. But let us say I want to add months or add years. How would we do it? So here I have 15 January 2021 and let's say I want to add three months to it. How do we do it? Because each month has different number of days. Thankfully for us, there is a built in MS Excel function to get that. If you want the same date three months from now, you could use the function edate. So here you're going to specify the start date and follow it with the number of months. So you, if you want to, let's say, add three months to so 15 January 2021. So we're going to put the start date as 15 January 2021, comma, three. Exact date, three months from the start date. What if you want to go back? The same function can be used. Only thing is the number of months have to be entered in negative. So from 18 March 2021, if you want to go back by three months, it's just going to be equals to E date 18 March 2021 comma minus three. At times, what we want is not the exact date, but the month ending date. A very simple example could be to get the month end date. So for example, if I am starting at 28 February 2021, if I use an E date function on 28 February 2021 comma two, I'm going to get the answer as 28 April 2021. Perhaps what I want is not 28 April. I want the end of April. So 28 February 2021 is the last date of February. And that way I want to get the last date of every month. So what you can do here is instead of E date, we could use a function called as EO month. So EO month, specify the start date and give the number of months. And it would give you the last date of that month. That's n number of months later. So from 28th February, it's going to add two months and it's going to give you the last date of that particular month. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're using 28th February or 15th February, the EO month would always give you last date that is n number of months away. EO month can also be used to go back. So just like we did with E date. So here I'm going to use EO month, specify the start date. And in the number of months, we have to just mention the months in negative number. So here I put the month as minus one. So that means it's going to start at 18th March 2021 and go one month back and get its last day. 
which means I'm going to get answer as 20th February 2021. You could use the EO month function to get the last date of same month as well. All you have to do is put the number of months as zero. Now, what if you want to add years to it? So let us say I want to start at 15 January 2021 and I want to add two years and find out what that date would be. How do we do that? While there are many approaches, the simplest approach we recommend is to work with the e-date or EO month functions. So if I want to add two years, all I'm going to do is multiply the number of years by 12. So I'm going to specify e-date, start date, we'll specify that, comma, two years is 24 months. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify the number of years and multiply it by 12. Each year has 12 months. So two years times 12 is 24 months. And that gives us the date that's two years from, from the start date. You could also use EO month, especially if you want to get the last date of the month that's two years from now. So I could use equals EO month, 28th February 2021, come out two times 12 is going to give me the answer as 28th February 2023. And in the, using the same approach, we could also go back. So if I wanted to go back by five years from 18 March 2021, all I have to do is I have to put a formula equals E date 18th March 2021 comma minus five times 12. Now let's talk about something that could be slightly more tricky. So right now what we want to do is just add number of working days or subtract working days. So here we have 15 January and I want to find out what are two working days or let me add 20 working days from 15 January. How would we do it? So for this, there is a function in Microsoft Excel called as Workday. So you start with Workday, mention the start date, then specify the number of days you intend to add. And then you could, if need be, you could also give a holiday list. So here I have a list of holidays and I'm just going to specify that. And this takes into consideration all the Saturday Sundays and the holidays and gives me the date in future. So here, if you look at it, we are adding 20 days, but I'm getting answer as 15th February because it is excluding all the Saturday Sundays and other holidays that is there in our holiday list. Now, what if your weekends are different? Maybe you have a Friday, Saturday weekend, or you only have a Sunday weekend. In that case, what you can do? There is one more function, which is workday.intl. So here you can again specify the start date and the number of days that you're working, you have option to choose the different weekend types. Whether we are talking about a Saturday, Sunday holiday, Sunday, Monday, or a Friday, Saturday, or just a Sunday only holiday. You can specify that. And here again, we can specify our list of holidays, which I have on the right, and you include that and you would get your answer. The workday function can also be used to subtract days. So let us say my start date is 22nd March, which is actually a Monday, and I want to find out the previous working day, which is going to be a Friday, what we could do is we could use the same workday or workday.intl function to get the previous day. Now let's talk about finding difference between dates. Again, in the fundamental section, we learned how to find difference between date or time. But sometimes what we want to do is not a straightforward difference. So for example, I want to find out exact number of working days that's between two dates. How do we do that? And so basically I want to take Saturday and Sunday as off and only find out the remaining number of days. So what you can do is you can give a formula equals net working days, specify the start date and the end date, and you would get the number of working days between the two dates. If there are other holidays, and if you have a holiday list, we can also incorporate that into this function. So I have a holiday list here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify the start date and then end date. And then I'm going to specify a holiday list, which is basically my table here that I have on the right. So here it's giving me the number of working days, taking into consideration the list of holidays. Okay, what if let's say I'm not in a zone where Saturday, Sunday are off. Let's say only Sunday is off for me or I'm in a country where Friday and Saturdays are off. So what do we do? For that, there is one more function called as networkdays.intl. So in this function, what we're going to do is you specify the start date and the end date and you have a choice where you can specify what kind of weekends are being followed. If you have a Friday and Saturday weekends, so you can select that option, which is number seven, and you will get answers accordingly. Now, what if for you only Sunday is a holiday and all other days are working days? So what we can do is choose an option accordingly. So we have 
certain options here where we can say you know sunday is the only holiday or friday is the only holiday you can choose it accordingly you can select that and here again you can also add another holiday list if you have another set of holiday list with you you can add that holiday list and excel would be able to compute the correct number accordingly now another situation where finding difference becomes a little tricky is when you're working in the bond market in bond markets in certain situations they follow 30 to by 360 day conventions and if you're following a 30 by 360 day convention that basically means we're going to assume every month has 30 days irrespective of whether it is a january or a february or a july so how do we do that so for this there is a function called as days 360 and in days 360 you can select the start date and you can select the end date now in the bond market there is a slightly different convention between how do you treat the last few days of a month especially let's say a 30th and a 31st and this varies between us and europe now you can choose a convention here the default is going to be the us method but you can choose your convention we will not go into the convention in depth for now, but you do have that option where we are going to go with 30 day month standard and we are going to find the difference using that standard. If you want to get the difference, but in a fraction of year. So for example, if the time gap between two months is 65 days, rather than getting it as 65, what if I wanted to get it as 65 by 365, which is a fraction of a year. For that, we could use a function called as year frac. So in a year frac function, you can give the start date and the end date. Here again, you can give various conventions. So especially in a bond market context, if you want to use 30 by 360 convention, you could also choose that. And now you would get the difference between the two dates, but as a fraction of a year. One thing as far as the year frac function is concerned is that it always results in absolute values. So for example, if the start date was 18 January 2023, now other functions is going to give us the data in negative numbers because the start date is after the end date whereas the year frac function would always give us an absolute number let me revert my date back to 18 january 2021 now lastly we're going to look at one function which is to function called as date diff so this date diff function for whatever reason does not have tooltips in microsoft excel so you may have to carefully understand the syntax here this function would especially be useful when you want to find out the difference in number of months or number of years between two dates. So if I want to give an answer as equals date diff, open the bracket, I'm going to select the start date and the end date. If I want to space find out how many months are there, fully completed months between the two dates, you have to type M within double quotes. Again, this M can be in a separate cell and you can link it to that as well. Now, this is going to give me the number of fully completed months, which is 14 months. Now, if you want to find out the number of fully completed years, so you can use the same date diff function. Many people read it as data diff, but it is date diff. You specify the start date and the end date. And if you want to find out the number of years, you give it as Y within double quotes. So the date diff function is almost like a private function. So it, you don't see the prompt for that. You don't see tooltips for that, but it does exist. So here I'm going to get the fully completed years. The date diff function can also fetch us some other extra details for which we need to know the code again. So for example, if I want to find out the fully completed months, but without taking into consideration the number of years between them. So I just want to find out what is the difference between March and January. So then you can specify it as date diff start date comma end date comma ym. The ym notation ignores the year and just fetches as the number of months. Similarly, if you want to find out days difference with irrespective of the number of completed months or years, then what we could do is you could give answer as equals date diff, open the bracket, select the start date and the end date. And we're going to give it within double quotes MD. Ignore the month and just fetches the days. This is going to give me answer as 5. Now, although date diff is a private function and you don't get a prompt or you don't get the tool tips, you do have the help documentation on date diff. So if you press F1 and go to the help section and type date diff, you will find the information. So here you can understand how it works and you can learn all about the date diff function and especially 
in terms of the parameters what parameters can be passed 